This next step is totally optional, but it is worth mentioning. I say that it's optional because I personally could not find any of my main keywords for my niche blog on either of these tools, but guess what? I still get great traffic from Pinterest on these topics. So do not feel like you're missing out if you can't find your niche keywords on these tools. The first tool that we're gonna use is the Pinterest Trends tool, which you can find at trends.pinterest.com. I'll leave a link below. We are gonna use this tool to validate the keywords that we have so far and to get more ideas on how we can branch off that main keyword. Trends are a pretty big deal on Pinterest and this is why the algorithm can seem so unstable sometimes, especially around big holidays like Christmas, but even the small ones too, because Pinterest really pushes those trending topics. So let's see if Pinterest Trends has anything to say about vegetarian recipes. I'm going to type in my main keyword, vegetarian recipes. Now I'll analyze the top results that show up in the suggested search dropdown. And if any of them are relevant to my content and I don't already have them, I'll go ahead and add them to my list of level one keywords. So if I look at these, I could say, oh, I have recipes for the slow cooker. So I'll hop over to my spreadsheet and add that one to my list. Now I'll press enter to bring up the graph for vegetarian recipes. And what this graph is showing you is the trends that the algorithm sees for this search term throughout the year. So you can see the searches really pick up in January. That's usually when everyone's, you know, setting New Year's resolutions. So it makes sense. When I click on vegetarian dinners under the related terms, it looks like there's barely any search volume. But this is only because it's being compared to vegetarian recipes, which is a huge topic and it has a huge search volume. So you can see how much the graph changes when I remove vegetarian recipes by clicking on that little X next to the keyword. So I can keep going and check out the related terms below the graph and you'll see that any term that you click on will be automatically added to that comparison graph. To get back to the search bar, I'll X out of those keywords that I have selected and I'll try adding letters from the alphabet behind my main keyword here to see if anything new comes up. But since the trends tool is pretty limited, you'll usually just get the same keywords over and over, but it is worth checking. Another free tool that Pinterest offers is the keyword tool inside of the ads dashboard. And don't worry, you don't have to run ads to access this tool. It's completely free to use on any Pinterest business account. To get to this tool, you'll go to ads and then select create ad. And this will bring you to the create campaign area. And you'll want to select consideration, which used to be called traffic. It's usually the default, so just make sure that it's selected. And you can skip over everything else on the page and scroll all the way to the bottom and hit that continue button. This will bring you to the ad group details page which is where the keyword tool is found. So if you scroll to keywords and interest, you'll see that that section is locked. To unlock the section, select find new customers. And once you select that, you can expand the keywords and interest section. And then you're gonna click on add keywords. So in this search box right here, I'm gonna type in my main keyword and this tool is gonna to give me a list of related keywords. It's also gonna give me an estimated search volume, but I don't know how accurate that is. So I don't really trust it, but that's another topic. So you can go through this list and click on the little plus sign next to the keyword you want and it will be added to a list in the left column. So this is a good way to collect keywords that you didn't see in your other searches or maybe some that you just didn't think of before. And for this main topic, I'm seeing that there are a lot of misspellings um, here. So I might wanna grab a few of those and put those into my board descriptions, just kind of sneak those in. If you add a keyword to your list by mistake, maybe you already have it on your list, you can highlight it and just delete it from the list and you can view more keywords by clicking on the see more button once you get to the bottom of the list. And if it's a popular niche like this one is, the list will basically go on forever. 
I'm choosing some keywords with uh, descriptive words like yummy and delicious and amazing. These types of really specific searches are good to target in super competitive niches like recipes because it's what people actually search for. Like I want to find something that's delicious. So that's what I'm going to type in. Once I'm happy with my list, I select all the keywords and copy them. Then I'll head over to my spreadsheet and I'll go ahead and name this column keywords from ads and I'll paste the list right underneath. I consider these keywords to be secondary keywords, so they will go in the white space along with the other secondary keywords. Up to this point in the mini course, we've gone through seven different ways to find more keywords for your main keyword. But if you blog about multiple topics or offer a variety of products in your online store, you'll want to do keyword research for each main category. And each main category is, of course, going to have its own main keyword. So the keyword planning spreadsheet has five tabs for five different main keywords. But if you need more, obviously, you can duplicate one of the tabs by right clicking and selecting duplicate. It's important to do the keyword research for each individual topic because you'll essentially be creating an interest cluster or an interest graph that the Pinterest algorithm can understand. For my example, let's say not only do I create vegetarian recipes, but I also have a few blog posts about homesteading. So I'll go over to another main keyword tab and I'll type homesteading there and I'll start that whole process all over again. So now that you've got tons of keywords, what should you do with them? Next up in the training, we're going to go through each data table one by one and start optimizing so that more people can find you.